Today in our 2017 GMC Terrain, we're going to be installing the Takancha Prodigy P2 Trailer Brake Controller, part number 90885. In conjunction with that, we're going to be using the Universal Installation Kit for Trailer Brake Controllers, part number ETBC7. So here we've got our brake controller installed. This is what it's going to look like. As you can see, it's got its manual slider, it tells you that it's not connected, as well as the brake controller signal to your trailer. Let's go check it out. The seven pole connector is included in the kit. There's also a four pole connector here for hooking up various trailers. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our seven pole. Now we've got our trailer connected, so you can see how it operates here. You've got your manual slider, which is gonna activate your brakes, and this is also how you can set your various sensitivity using the slider on the left here. On the right, you can change your boost. Your boost is gonna adjust the sensitivity for the trailer that you've got connected on how quickly it will apply the brakes to its maximum. Now this device, unlike time delay devices, is gonna be a proportional device. So it's going to react based on the deceleration of your vehicle. So this means that when you're stopping, your trailer is gonna decelerate just the same as your vehicle decelerates. It also has a 360 degree operation feature. So it will automatically level itself after you've installed it. This way, when you're going uphill, it knows you're going uphill. And when you're going downhill, it knows you're going downhill and it can adjust the brakes appropriately for that situation. And now we'll show you how to get it installed. For the first step, we're gonna take our existing four pole connector and turn it into a seven pole connector for our trailer brakes system. Now we're gonna put our seven way connector here. To do that, we're gonna be using the help from Kurt C57202 to mount this to our hitch. We're gonna feed our mounting bracket on. Once you got your long bracket in place, you can take your seven way connector bracket and get it started. It's a good idea to get this started before you get the long bracket all the way tightened down. So that way you can make sure you can get your tools in there to tighten down the hardware. The hardware needed to connect the seven way bracket to the long bracket is included with the long bracket. You'll secure these using a Phillips or flathead screwdriver and a 3 8 socket. Once you've got those secure, you can tighten on your long bracket all the way using an eight millimeter socket. Then you can trim off the excess. Now we're gonna take our seven pole connector, put it into place and properly orient it. Slide the including hardware through, or the long flat head screws. And start the nuts on the back side. And then tighten down the hardware. You'll use a flathead screwdriver and a nine millimeter socket. Now we're gonna go ahead and mount our ground wire. We're gonna run it over the hitch here. And we're just gonna mount it right on the body above the hitch. Next, we're gonna take our existing four pole connector and plug it into the seven way connectors, four pole connector on the back. The purple wire is for hooking up your reverse lamp circuit on your seven pole connector. This is an optional circuit and we're not gonna be using it in this application, but if you wanted to use it, you would splice it into your existing reverse lamps. And now we're just gonna wrap up all this excess wire and get it up out of the way and keep it away from any heat source such as the exhaust, any sharper moving objects. Now we're gonna to need to connect our brake wire circuit and our power circuit and run that up to our battery with the existing wire extension. Before we do that, we're gonna take off the existing butt connectors and we're gonna replace them with some heat shrink butt connectors to prevent any moisture and corrosion from occurring on our circuits. We're gonna go ahead and peel back some wire so we can run it to the front. and we'll just trim off the excess. Now we're gonna strip back some of our wire so we can connect it to our butt connectors. We'll connect the black wire to the black circuit and the white wire to the blue circuit. Now you're gonna to wanna to heat shrink your butt connectors. You can use an open flame, however, it's recommended to use a heat gun so you don't burn the ends, which can cause them to deteriorate rapidly. Now we want to run this wire up to the engine compartment. 
When running it from the back to the front, make sure you stay away from any heat sources such as your exhaust or moving components such as suspension or driveline. We're gonna go ahead and run it now and we'll show you how we ran it afterwards. So as you can see here, we took our wire, we ran it down our hitch, up over our exhaust, and then we just followed the factory wiring harness. This way we know our wire is gonna be out of the way because it's already where our factory wiring is. So this, it will not obstruct any heat or moving objects. It is best, if at all possible, to follow your factory equipment to avoid any complications. And now we've got it up here. We're gonna go ahead and lower it down and feed a wire from the top or some hard, flexible object that we can tie our wire to to pull it back up. We're gonna use a piece of plastic airline to feed our wire back up. So you wanna be looking down to where you're gonna feed your wire it's best to try and stay towards the outside and look for objects that you ran it to on your way up. Now we're going to go ahead and take our excess wire that we need to pull up and we're going to use some electrical tape or something else to secure it to the line so we can pull it back through. And now we're going to finish pulling our line up so we can secure it to our battery. We can go ahead and disconnect it from the airline that we had attached it to earlier. Now it is a good idea to go look underneath again to make sure there's no excess or that you didn't get hung up on anything. Now we can go ahead and slice this back all the way to where we pulled it up because one wire is going to go to the battery and the other wire needs to go back into the car to connect to our brake controller. Now that we've got all the gray material peeled back, we'll need to run our white wire inside the cab to go up to our brake controller. Now we're going to need to remove the kick panel here. Two push pins and three seven millimeter bolts. And there's one 10 millimeter nut and stud here in the back that you have to take off. Once you've got them off, you'll push your panel in, press on the release tab to drop it down, do that on both sides. You'll have to lift it up over that panel there, unplug your light, and pull it off the stud in the back. Now we can get this out of the way and set it aside. With our kick panel out of the way, Feed a hard, flexible object through your grommet there. Again, a coat hanger would work perfectly. We've used a magnet extension here. Then you could tape your line to it, making sure it's secure, so you can pull it back through the grommet. And with our line connected to the other side, we can start pulling it back. Now we've got our brake circuit wire fed through in preparation to be hooked up to our controller. Now we need to mount our circuit breakers for both our brake controller and our seven pole connector. The seven pole connector is gonna use the 40 amp circuit breaker. So we're gonna mount this one first. We've decided on a mounting location right here as this will give us access to use the self-tapping screws and easily connect it without any harm of grounding out or shorting to any nearby objects. And right next to our 40 amp, we're gonna mount our 20 amp for our brake controller. The self-tapping screws that come with the kit We'll use a quarter inch socket. Now we're gonna go ahead and run our black wire up there. We're gonna zip tie it into place first so that way we know we're gonna have enough length to run it properly. Now that we've got our wire run, go ahead and cut. And you wanna give yourself a little excess as you're gonna to have to strip it back and put on your butt connector. Strip back some wire. and then hook up your wire. Your brass studs are gonna go to your battery and your silver studs are gonna go to your accessories, such as the seven pole connector and your brake controller. Then go ahead and tighten it down. Now using your excess black wire, it's gonna take about the same length for both of them. Go ahead and cut that in half, and there should be enough left to run it from your circuit breakers to your battery post. Now we're gonna prepare our battery wires. Go ahead and strip back some wire on each side. Then we're gonna crimp on one large yellow eyelet onto one end of the wire at your battery post side, and one small yellow eyelet to the other end of the wire, and this is gonna be your circuit breaker side. And now we're gonna do the same thing with our other piece of wire. So now we're gonna hook up both of our small ends to our circuit breakers 
We're gonna leave our larger ends disconnected until we've completed the rest of the insulation so we don't cause any shorts or mishaps. And hook up your other circuit breaker. And both of these are gonna be on our copper post because they're going to our battery positive. And then tighten them down with a 10 millimeter socket. Now we're gonna to need to run a power and ground wire into the cab through our grommet to our brake controller. If you don't have enough wire left over in your kit, you can get some excess wire here at eTrailer.com with part numbers DW02359-1 for the white wire and part number 12-1-1 for the black power wire. They're sold by the foot and we're gonna need about four or five feet per color to complete our circuit. Now we're gonna run these through just like we did before. Since we've already got our white wire run, we're just gonna go ahead and tape our other wire to it and then feed it back and forth to get our new wires through. Just get a nice good tape job on it. Now that we've got all of our necessary wires pulled through, we're gonna go ahead and mount our trailer brake controller so that we can route them there as clean as possible. Go ahead and find the most appropriate mounting location for your controller. We're gonna put ours about here and go ahead and thread it right up into the bottom of the dash. Make sure not to over tighten your screws as that could cause it to strip and then your controller would not be secure. Now we're gonna take our harness that plugs into our brake controller and put butt connectors on the end of each wire. Leave the red wire alone at this time. Now the wires that we fed through our grommet in the firewall, we're gonna to wanna to cut those to the appropriate length and then strip back so we can connect them to our brake controller harness. We're going to connect black to black. The large white wire that came from the back by our seven pole that we ran through, this is actually gonna to connect to our blue wire in our harness. And the small white wire that we ran out, which is gonna to go to ground, will connect to our white wire on our harness. And now we're gonna hook up our red wire, which is our brake signal wire. The brake lamp circuit's gonna be the white wire in pin eight on the black connector of your BCM. We're gonna put our splice connector on the white wire and on the red wire. Once you've got it on both circuits, take a pair of pliers and squeeze the splice connector together. Then fold over the cover and we're all connected. Now we're gonna take our small yellow eyelet connector, crimp it onto our black circuit that we ran to our controller, and that's gonna to connect to the silver side of our 20 amp circuit breaker. Now we're gonna hook a larger eyelet to our white circuit that ran to our brake controller. This is gonna be our ground wire. We're gonna connect that here, right to our battery. Use a 10 millimeter socket to disconnect the, the nut. Place your eyelet on, reinstall your nut, and tighten it back down. Now we need to connect up our two circuit breaker wires. That'll go right to our battery. We're gonna do that right here on the jumper post in our fuse box. Put the eyelets on and reinstall the jumper post. Now you're gonna to wanna to plug it in just to make sure it turns on and everything um, before you put your panel back on. And now that we've got it in place, we can go hook it up to our trailer and test it out. We have our left turn, our right turn, our brake lamp, left and right, while the brakes are depressed, we've got our tail lamps and just our brake lamps. And then on our brake controller, we're gonna go ahead and push over the manual sweep and verify that we've got our voltage back there. And then we can check here that we've got our 12 volts back at our connector. You'll have to adjust your brake controller for your GMC terrain and the trailer that you're hauling. The settings will need to be set appropriately so that your vehicle stops at the right time. If it's set too sensitive, it may stop too early and you'll be pulling the trailer. If it's set too soft, the trailer will then be pushing back into the vehicle because there's not enough brake force on the trailer. For additional information on setting your sensitivities and your boost, please refer to your instruction manual and also to the webpage at eTrailer.com for additional information. And that completes our installation of the Takancha Prodigy P2 Brake Controller and Universal Installation Kit on our 2017 GMC Terrain. Thanks for watching and click the link in our description below to shop, learn more, or visit us at eTrailer.com. And leave us a comment if you have any questions.